Hey friend, in this video, we are in week three of our technique series where we'll, we're building a new technique after technique every single week for five weeks. And so we're in week three. And so today I will be covering complex shapes and forms and we will be doing a snowflake tutorial. Since it's the winter time, I wanted to keep it winter theme for the month of December. And we're going to be pulling out some similar lessons that you'll find in my book, Everyday Watercolor. I also have a companion course coming out for Everyday Watercolor next month, January, 2024. So if you're interested in that, we'll link all that stuff below. But for now, let's dive in and learn all about snowflakes. Okay, so for my background, I've painted this really juicy, vibrant, bright blue background using wet and wet techniques. So I'm using my one and a half inch Mottler brush from the Aqua Elite series by Princeton um, to lay down some water. If it's a little bit dirty water, it doesn't matter because you're going to put, put in a bunch of rich color in the background and it's going to take over. So I'm just glazing my entire paper with this water wash. And I want to make sure that there's not any areas where it's puddling or anything. And then I'm dropping in some Daler and Rowney watercolor ink or acrylic ink into the paper, the water that's wet. And I love how watercolor ink spreads. So for this type of background, I usually like to use um, my watercolor inks because they're just so fun and rich and do crazy things. And then I'm also going to drop in some creamy, buttery consistency of Prussian blue. And I'm just kind of massaging that into the background to make these shapes and colors blend a little bit better together. But I do also want to, to show some, some areas of the background that are much lighter to kind of give this foggy, misty snowfall, snowflake scene. So I'm grabbing some lighter values of blues and darker values of blues and just kind of punching them in and around and working pretty quickly so that Everything that's done at this stage is done wet and wet. So wet and wet technique is a lot of the times used in your base layers, your backgrounds. And it's when you can, obviously, when you touch two areas that are wet together, like water and color, wet color, or two areas of wet color um, together or more. And um, I'm rubbing some Himalayan pink salt into the background, which is just gonna give it this cauliflower look. Um, kind of like scorching or bleaching some of the darker colors. I love adding salt to my wet backgrounds. I think it adds a nice fun texture. Um, but wet and wet technique is used when you wanna show gradients or smooth blends between values or colors. Um, and so for this background, we're building off of the previous weeks in this watercolor series that we've done using wet and wet technique and adding in the snowflakes on top that which are gonna be done all with um, wet on dry technique and we're gonna do snowflakes that have they're really simple when you put it all together but because there's more compound strokes and more than just a couple of strokes for the shape it makes it more intricate looking and more detailed like an actual snowflake So now that my background is dry, we have those fun bleach spots from the salt, which is gonna look like some snowfall or blurry snow together. I'm just painting in an X basically for my first few lines and they do look wonky um, when you do just your lines, but then the more detail you add to your snowflakes and the more snowflakes you add to the whole piece, the less you notice those little wonky details and the more detailed it looks, the more intricate it looks. So just keep going with your line work illustrations like these because the more detail and the more shapes you add, like see that line right there is even crooked, this one's wobbly, but it doesn't matter because it's well, the more snowflakes that you add, the more detail that you add to each snowflake as well is going to distract from that and make it just look like a really fun and detailed piece. So I'm using a size two round brush. This is the Heritage 4050 size two brush from Princeton and just dragging down in the downward motion because that's how I get my thinnest lines. Instead of pushing away from my hand, I like to pull down toward me. And just getting these little lines as even as possible, but again, doesn't matter if they're wonky for our first snowflake. And all these techniques that I'm covering today, but then also in the rest of this series, the two videos that we've, or yeah, two videos that we've done previous to this and the two that are to come after this, 
Uh, there are more in-depth explanations inside of my upcoming course, Everyday Watercolor Companion course, which as you know, this is a series, Everyday Watercolor um, YouTube si series that we're doing that expands on my book a little bit. Everyday Watercolor and Everyday Watercolor Flowers and Everyday Watercolor Seashores. So I'm doing a slightly different looking snowflake for each one little circles on the ends. Again, doesn't matter if the shapes look off or uneven or not straight or whatever. You're just gonna, we're gonna layer tons and tons of snowflakes on this. And it might be helpful too, to look up images of up close snowflakes because I didn't do that. So I was trying to just think about what they might look like. Um, but if, if you need ideas for patterns on each snowflake, then definitely recommend using Pinterest or Google for that. Just doing another little leafy guy that's bigger. and applying all the same steps. So it's gonna be a really helpful exercise too in getting that line work down. And for this one, I got a little lazy and pushed on it and it kind of looks like leaves, which is fun. Painting another snowflake guy with this white gouache. You can use white gouache or acrylic paint. You could probably also use some sort of white chalk marker or pen, white pen could be fun if you wanna get more precise with your details in your snowflakes. show some crisscrossing and overlapping and some snowflakes peeking over the side to just give it this feeling of being right there in the scene up close and personal to the snowflakes Just continuing to fill in the left, mostly the left side of the piece is what I want to show of the paper. And just mixing up the shapes, the angles, the patterns with each one of my snowflakes and using the same size two brush for all of them. more bitty ones on the right bottom left I mean <laughs> and then we'll probably do some splatter to add more snow feeling snowfall feeling and you can keep adding snowflakes to this or I kind of like the creeping in effect with this composition but the splatter is what really makes the piece Super fun and tie it all together with this snowfall feeling like we're right there in the middle of this snowfall that just started and some snowflakes are starting to brush right up against our nose. Cozy feelings. So I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you in the next video.
Thank you so much for watching. I hope that was helpful for you guys in building complex shapes and forms, mostly lines with this one. It was a, it was a good, fun tutorial. I hope you loved it. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching these videos. And if you wanna check out my book, Everyday Watercolor, it's linked below. This book came out in 2017 and it is a 30 paintings in 30 days style book. So each day builds on the previous in terms of technique and learning new things. And then I also have Everyday Watercolor Companion course coming out next month, January, 2024. So make sure you check out the pre-order deal we're running right now for the month of December, 2023. And if it's not December, 2023, when you're watching this, it's still available, but just go check it out. It won't be at the pre-order price. And I hope you check it out and I will see you in the next video.